Hi, I couldn't find any um, any good tutorials on how to create a script filter for Alfred using uh, Python. The main thing that I had an issue finding was how you get the input from the user into the Python script and then how you could get that uh, output from the Python script back to Alfred. So that's the main things that I want to go over um, in this video. Um, you can see I have my my uh, custom workflow that I've created here. Um, when you the way that you would do this, I'll go over the other steps. I mainly wanted to cover the first things I talked about, but I'll go over the other steps briefly. Uh, to create a workflow, I would just go blank workflow, then you click inside you right click inside any blank area then you could go to script filter and that is how you would get this guy right here then you'd want to put in whatever your custom keyword is um, I chose NP for number pad um, but obviously you can put in whatever you want there um, and you want to make sure this says argument required with space okay and then you're going to leave this all as it was except this you need to change with to uh, with input as query um, so that you can use this exact syntax. Um, right here, this is just the terminal command that would run. Um, so you're using the Python command, this is the Python script. So whatever your Python script is named, that's what would go there. And then this is going to remain the same if you chose this. Um, that's just passing the user's um, query into your Alfred's, uh, or into your Python script. Okay, so then the way that you would get your Python script into this workflow to be accessible by that script filter, you right click on it and say open finder, then you'll see this window open and then you could drag in your um, your Python script right here and uh, the advantage with doing it this way versus um, just you know uh, clicking on this and changing the script to Python is that you can use a legitimate code editor um, that has line numbers and you know and uh, syntax highlighting all that it's just much easier especially when you are debugging it which I'll show you in a second so um, in order to even make the most basic Python script uh, you'll have to import at least these uh, the only way you get away without um, without importing them would be if you imported a module that in turn imported these. Um, so you have to have JSON and system in there. Okay, so this is uh, the first really important part. This is how you grab the query from the user. Um, you name any variable you want. I just named mine args for arguments. And um, then you use this. So same system dot arg v and then you're going to use the uh, number one in that array. I think I use number one because zero would maybe be the NP part in my case. I don't know, but that's what you have to do in order to uh, grab the input from the user. Okay, so for the rest of, of this script, you can see I'm just using the input here to feed it through my filter. And then this is the next important part. Okay, so I've got my, uh, you know, my final variable, and I want to pass that back to Alfred. So you can, uh, if you want to pass results back to Alfred, which is the whole point of this, uh, you have to create a JSON variable. Now. Most scripts would be more complicated than this, um, so you'd have a JSON variable that has um, this guy items, and he would return a list of other items. But in this case, it's my uh, my script is very simple, so this is the bare minimum that you can get away with. Um, you just have to. I don't think this is even displayed. I might not even even need that. Um, but anyway, 
So you can see how I'm creating the JSON here. This is actually pretty well documented on Alfred's site. Um, but you can't uh, then just feed that back to Alfred. You have to convert this into a stream. Um, so this is where you would use um, this JSON API. And what this is saying here is it's um, taking the result uh, variable, which is just pure JSON, and it's dumping it into a string, and the name of my string is final result. So then, the, uh, this is the part that was really weird to me. The way that you get that back to Alfred is you use the print uh, function that you see right here. It was, that was very strange because normally this is uh, just for printing you know, whatever you need to to the console, uh, mainly for the purpose of debugging. That's pretty much how it is in every other language. Um, and that's how it is in Python too. It's just it's being used in a special way, I guess, when you use it with Alfred. So that is how you uh, get the input from the user and how you give it back to Alfred. Okay, so the way that you debug a script, um, like test it out, is you would press that bug thing and then um, you try to just use your script basically. And you can see I'm not getting any errors. Um, it's working just like it's supposed to. Um, and then when I press enter, it's going to feed that into these two things. You can see the edge of the notification that came there. Um, these are pretty intuitive to, to figure out. You just, the output from my script, that's query. Um, and that, and it's the same thing here. And it made a little error sound because there wasn't anything to paste to. Because that's what this uh, number path thing is, is meant to do. If you unjet this, then it would just copy it to the clipboard and not worry about it. Um, but anyway, so that is, that's how you do that. Um, the, as far as getting stuff onto, like the, the reason why you'd use the debugger, like, let's say you had some, something that is messed up in your script, like I just put in. So now when I run it, you can see it gives me an error for all those times that I press any key. Uh, and it says line 38. That's why it's really good to have a code editor because um, you can easily see line 38. That's where the issue is. Um, otherwise, there'd be a lot of counting involved. So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks.